there, friends. I'm happy you're here. This is Stefa in The Secret Place, and I am with you today for a few minutes to share from a book that I've mentioned once or twice before in the last few years. It's called The Eternal Promise. I think really only once. It's a sequel to A Testament of Devotion, the great book I shared with you from Thomas Kelly. Well, this little um, passage here that I have to share with you today um, helps us understand uh, a little bit about the inner witness that Kelly talks about and about whether or not if there truly is a God and how we can be sure. How about that? He says, and now I want to let you in on a secret. How can you be sure there is a God to be found at the other end of your search? Because he has already been showing himself to you in your very impulse to seek him. Did you start the search for him? He started, uh, he started you on the search for him and lovingly, anxiously, tenderly guides you to himself. You knock on heaven's gate because he has already been standing at the door knocking within you, disquieting you and calling you to arise and seek your father's house. It is, as St. Augustine says, he was within and we mistakenly thought we could seek him without. Within us all is a slumbering miracle, a latent Christ, a light, capital L, a power, an immediacy with God. To this, to find this indwelling Christ actively, dynamically working within us is to find the secret that Jesus wanted to give men. It isn't a matter of believing in the inner light. It's a matter of yielding your lives to him. It's a matter of daily, hourly going down into the Shekinah of the soul. In the silence, finding yourself continually recreated and realigned and corrected again and again from warping effects of outer affairs. It is having a center of creative power and joy and peace and creation within you. Does that thrill your soul like it thrills mine? Ah, oh. oh my goodness. Especially this last part where he says, going down into the Shekinah, the glory, the beauty, of the soul where the Spirit of God abides in the silence and finding yourself there recreated and realigned and corrected again and again from the warping effects of outer affairs. <sighs> Can you relate to the warping effects of outer affairs? Can you relate to that like I can? The warping effects. The sounds of the world these days, whether they be on the news or our news feed, our social media, our videos and memes, people's writings, mm, they have a warping effect. Who's telling the truth? Who's sharing a lie? Who's spreading a lie? Who's spreading the truth? People are walking in confusion. We don't know. And so we seek God. We need him. We need him desperately to separate truth from lie, light from darkness, and we seek him. But Kelly is telling us, don't seek him without. Don't seek him outside of yourself. Seek him within. He has made you, and he has made a special place for himself in you, in every human being. Now, the Quakers, like Thomas Kelly, call it the spark of, of light, capital L, the spark of the Lord, the spark of, of the Christ of the living Lord. I, I, I call it the place of spirit, where the Lord, Holy Spirit, where the Lord wants to meet with us. And in that place, again and again, if we go to meet him in that inner closet, if we go to meet him in that inner closet, the door that swings within, as one of my friends said, we go there and we meet him, and again and again and again, he will recreate, he will reignite, he will renew, and he will help us reimagine a new life for ourselves, more new, fresh breath. I told you at the beginning of this that, that I was going to talk to you about knowing if there is a God or not. That's what Kelly mentioned. That very spark, that very sense that you're asking, that you're looking, that you're longing, that you're wondering, that you're saying, God, are you there? That is a sign of God seeking you. That is a sign of God seeking me. God wants us to be in communion with him. 
God wants us to be aligned with him. He wants, to, he wants us to walk in the beauty of his holiness, in the beauty of his oneness. I find that so encouraging because no matter how dedicated one might be to following after the Lord, there are times in our lives where we might want to give up or we, we go beyond surrender and think and, and slip into doubt. But he's always there beckoning us, calling us. Some versions of the scripture say wooing us, wooed, wooed by the Spirit of God. And he will breathe new life over you in the midst of your bruised heart. He will breathe rejuvenating joy and hope in you, over you, and through you in the midst of your pain. He's done it for me. He continues to do it for me. He'll do it for you. He wants to do it for all of us. So let's not get caught up and tangled in this um, warping effect that the world has on us. You know, it's something that we all understand and we know. We want, even if we don't name it, like he called it the Shekinah of the soul, that place where the glory of God, the glory of God bubbles up because he's made us in his image. He's made you in his holy image. He's made me that way too. We may not reflect it yet. We may not reflect it at all. But then occasionally you might see an inkling in someone else. What is that? You say, what is that? That's the Shekinah glory. That's the, that's the, the light of God in someone else that you see. Or maybe you'll see it in yourself. It's something new, it's something fresh. Or maybe it's something you remember from many days past and it needs to be rekindled. The flame needs to be fanned. Let that flame be fanned. Let today be part of that flame being fanned in the inner depths of your soul. God is with you. He is with us, Emmanuel. And he wants you and he loves you even in the midst of your pain, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of unknowing, in the midst of scratching your head. Is there really God? Could there really be God? Oh, come on. It's a valid question, one that I understand, but just take a look out in the sky. If that's not enough for you, start to study neuroscience. That's a challenge for you. Start to study brain science. The unbelievable, immeasurable glory, Shekinah, that comes as a result from that knowledge is just amazing. 86 billion neurons, and that's not counting the layers and the connector points and to the nerves. What a mind who could create the human brain. He's amazing. That's the word that's worthy of our God, our living God. He is there. Seek him in the quiet places. Bless you, my friend. That's it for today on The Secret Place. I'm glad you came by. I hope you'll leave a comment and tell me what you're thinking. You know, if you're not totally agreeing with me and you're having a hard time with it, you can leave that comment there. It's not going to break my heart. It's not going to shake me. Of course, I don't like cursing, so please don't leave a curse. But I don't, I don't, um, I don't anticipate that happening. I do anticipate and hope that you will come back and listen again. And much more important than listening to me, that you will listen for that sound of the holy voice, the still small voice of our living God. Bye now. Have a wonderful day.